Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 27th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. When doing incident response, it's often important to sort of quickly get a snapshot of relevant files and settings from a system that you may assume to be compromised. Tom today looked at a simple command line tool that can accomplish some of this for Linux. It's called UAC or the Unix-like artifacts collector. And as the name implies, it runs on Unix-like systems and then collects various artifacts. Tom also took a look at uh, what changes uh, this tool makes to the system. And the most notable here were access times, which isn't really all that surprising. They should change now. Uh, Tom points out some other tools and do those changes after they're done. But the UAC does have an option actually to record these access times before it accesses any files. So you still have the original values preserved. Overall, looks like a useful tool, also fairly transparent. There are YAML files that sort of include all the commands it runs. So you can also manage, update and change them uh, to your specific needs. And as Tom points out, you probably do want to run the tool first in a test environment a few times, become really familiar with it uh, before you are using it in an actual incident. And well, password managers remain in the news. Uh, the latest is uh, phishing sites trying to impersonate a Bitwarden logins. Usually to log into a Bitwarden account, you log into either vault.bitwarden.com or into your locally hosted instance. But uh, apparently someone this week managed to register bitwardenlogin.com and hosted a lookalike site to impersonate vault.bitwarden.com. The site has now been taken down and I haven't had a chance to inspect it myself. Uh, but of course, the big problem here is yet again, that it's just a username and password that may be used to actually secure your password manager. And that as we have seen with KeePass, another example is uh, probably not what you really want to have happen. The other issue here with Bitwarden is which actually feature I like the self hosting feature that you have to protect also that login page for your own instance of Bitwarden, which of course may also be subject to attacks and phishing. Now, if you wonder how anybody would be tricked into connecting to this fake Bitwarden login page, well, that apparently happened again with Google Ads. Bleeping Computer, for example, has an example where app bitwarden.com also another uh, phishing site uh, was promoted uh, via sponsored ads uh, hosted by uh, google and Securonix uh, published a blog post about yet another attack tool that implements a command control channel via WebSockets. WebSockets is really sort of getting popular here. Now, uh, this particular tool is implemented in Python. Uh, Securonix uh, did write about an earlier tool a while ago that was written in Go. And I think I may have mentioned that as well. The initial infection vector here is the usual uh, link uh, shortcut trick with a malicious email but what's sort of a little bit different here is then that the actual command control channel uses a web socket which well is popular enough where it may not stick out in anything unusual in your network but makes things more difficult to detect in particular on the endpoint itself then in other miscellaneous sort of vulnerability related news, we do have now a proof of concept exploit for a vulnerability in the Windows Crypto API. This vulnerability CVE 2022-34689 was patched last 
August. And uh, the issue here was that uh, digital signatures for certificates could use MD5. And well, since MD5 collisions are well known, wasn't really that much of a surprise to see this uh, proof of concept tool uh, pop up now, taking advantage of this vulnerability. Then we also have an update for the bind DNS server software. Nothing really all that uh, critical here, but uh, they have uh, three vulnerabilities that they rate as high, which in particular does allow for denial of service attacks under certain configurations. So apply the patch as it becomes available, but nothing that you need to rush out. And then if you're using the uh, Sky High Security Secure Web Gateway, well, it suffers from a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the single sign-on plugin. So again, apply patches as they become available. Well, that's it for today. The first sticker should be arriving uh, sort of maybe uh, today, tomorrow, at least for those in the US who order them. And uh, I'll probably mail out another batch uh, this uh, weekend. Let me know when they arrive. Uh, thanks and uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.